good. That's good. <laughs> response. Today we're going to play some trivia. All right. I have some questions, and I hope you have some answers. If you don't, then nothing's going to happen. I mean, there's there's no reward, there's no pun punishment. So it's just it's just a fun game of trivia. Okay. What is coming up this week? Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I know. We'll just put manners to the side, okay? You don't have to raise your hand either, okay? So you just scream it out, okay? Christmas is this week. Huh? Christmas is going to be sad. What? The candles? Yeah, I think so. So that means don't touch the flame. Uh, Christmas is Saturday this week. You know what that means for me? I'm off work. Booyah! <laughs> um, no, but Christmas is this week. I have another question. Um, what is Christmas? Oh, um, Jesus. 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 Jesus' birthday. Good. I was really hoping you'd say that. Jesus' birthday. So now we're going to have some questions about the story of Jesus' birth. All right. Um, Who was Jesus' mom? Mary. Mary. Mary, it is. Who is Jesus's... Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I was just saying, you, you answered too fast. Yes, I was about to ask you. <laughs> right on it, right ahead. Thinking, you're reading my mind. That's kind of scary. You're very good. But yes, Joseph, all right? What was the first group of people that came to see Jesus? Oh, the prophets? No, not the prophets. They were way before Jesus. They were Israel, Israelites. They were the sheep. What was Shepherds. 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 There we go. There we go. Third time. Third time of the charm. That's, that's the way they did it. Um, who, is, who is after the shepherds to come and see Jesus? Uh, the wise men. The wise men. Good job. Okay, let's ask this. Who was the mean king that was trying to get king rid of David. King David. Herod. No, not David. Herod. King Herod. That was a little bit hard. I'm just, I'm, I'm making it a little bit hard. What did the wise men see? They saw, oh, they went to sleep and they saw an angel and he told them not to go back to Herod. No, yeah. not to go back. What did the, what the wise men see to come and see Jesus? Um, they came to see Jesus. Up in the sky. Up in the sky. All the angels. Gabriel. Star. 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 Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Stars. So, the story of the birth of Jesus is very important. Why is that? Not just because Jesus um, came here. Just because. Just the visit. So we can go to and this so he could show us Christ and lots of love about this Jesus. And God. Yeah. He came to take all of our sins away. Right? He came to sacrifice himself for us so we can become children of God. <clears throat> Imagine that. That's pretty cool. So, we all know Jesus is the reason for the season, right? So, we just have to make sure we remember that. On Christmas Day, whenever we have all the presents, we also got to thank <coughs> Jesus, right? Thank you, Jesus, for, for this present you. that I have. And thank you for coming into this world. Thank you for coming into this world. Awesome. Let's pray real quick. Dear Heavenly Father, God, thank you for all these young kids, God. I ask that you move within their lives and that you grow them up to be good Christians, to follow you disciples, who chase after you and long after you, Father. Thank you for teaching these young kids who you are and what the real reason of Christmas is, because they knew it before. I, I didn't have to say anything. That was awesome and incredible. Uh, we're so thankful to be here to worship you, God. I know these kids are excited for the snack, so we'll go ahead and wrap up this prayer, God. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. All have known who Christ is. All have known the story of Jesus. That's a blessing. And that makes me so happy. Uh, I really enjoyed the thing that you shared a second ago. Uh, that little story that you got sent. I, that almost made me cry. Just thinking about that. Man. But good morning, Oak Hill. Good morning. Pleasure to be here again today. Uh, I'm so excited that I'm here with you this morning. Uh, I want to start out and... Uh, I had to slap myself on the wrist after I got done with the last time that I was here because I realized after uh, it was brought to my attention that my last sermon could have been taking, taken as prideful and I didn't realize that and I looked it over in my head and I was like, man, there was a lot of pride in that sermon and I apologize. As a pastor or as a preacher, I do have to be see-through. And whenever I see things in my life that are not right, I have to call them out too. I can't stand up here and call you out for being prideful or you out for things that you do without calling myself out as well. So I want to apologize for that. Uh, I'm happy to be here today. And uh, though I know God used the sermon for good no matter what, because God uses everything for the good of those who love Him. Amen? And... Uh, I had to apologize uh, because Christ taught or taught us over and over again to be humble and to be the least of these, especially whenever he came down from heaven, his throne, the lion, that feeding trough that animals eat from, and it's dirty, and he, he slept there. So I wanted to apologize for that. But what a better way to combat my last sermon that seemed a little bit prideful than to speak with a sermon about being humble. Mm. Amen. So let us go ahead and pray and we'll jump right in. Dear Heavenly Father God, I ask that you make me none and you, so that you may be known. Mm. That you take me from this position that I'm in on this pulpit and make my identity disappear so that all they know is, I'm just the guy that speaks what you told me to speak. I'm not Joseph. I'm some random person that just speaks the truth. God, I ask that you move within me and that you speak the word that you've given me. Uh, to everyone who hears God, and I ask that you open the ears and open the minds of everyone here and open the hearts of everyone here. If anyone who has a hardened heart, or their heart is becoming hardened, God has to make it a heart of flesh. And if they are struggling to understand because they don't want to, God has that you ease their minds so that they understand the words you have to speak to them. Yes. Lord, we love you and we praise your holy and precious name, Jesus. Amen. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 So this past week, I found a great treasure to me now, and I am super duper excited about it. Uh, I found it on the Caleb app. Do any of y'all know what Caleb is? It's a Christian radio station, right? And that is meant to bring you positivity and encouragement. That's always what they say. Positive encouraging Caleb. Positive encouraging Caleb. It's a great radio station. It keeps me going through my day, no matter how many packages I'm delivering. It, it keeps me moving, right? Well, on their app, they have a button that you can push, and you can pick what type of music you want. And I found this out because it's Christmas time, and they have a Christmas station. So, of course, I went to the Christmas station, and I clicked on it, and I saw Christmas, and I saw two other little stations on there. I was like, wait a second. And one was the 90s, and one was the 2000s. I was like, is this, is this Christian 2000s? So I clicked it, and instantly song after song, all these songs that I completely forgot about that I was literally raised on every single day, flooding through my head and I'm like, I love this station. I'm listening to this every single day. I barely listen to regular Caleb now. I'm always going to the 2000s because that's my station. I love it. And uh, so I was excited about that. And the other day, while I was listening to it, one of my favorite songs that I 
completely forgot about came on. And it's by uh, Toby Mac. And uh, I thought uh, over the lyrics this time, because back then, whenever it was 2000 to 2005, and that song probably came on, I was only five years old or six years old. So I wasn't thinking about what it meant. And the song, the lyrics of the song says, I was made to love you. I was made to find you. I was made just for you. I was made to adore you. I was made to love and be loved by you. And then it goes on to, um, see, I'm forgetting it, but that's the part that I'm going to hit today. Is, I was made to love you. I was made to find you. I was made just for you, made to adore you. I was made to love and be loved by you. That's the song. When you're little, you may know the words, and may be able to sing them, but you don't know the words. You know what I mean? You understand? It? You don't understand what the words mean. And I listened to that song, and it just clicked in my head, and I was like, wow. I understand what this word means now. I understand the whole meaning of this now. So I wanted to break it down today. But that fact that I said earlier is whenever you're young, you may know the words, but you don't know the words. It's something that we need to understand, and uh, we need to teach our kids. Mm -hmm. Because we have people who will let their kids listen to whatever songs they want to, and they may know the words, and they're like, well, they don't know the words. <laughs> well, yeah, but they're still saying them. And that's not healthy. Because mm -hmm. eventually they'll understand the words. And eventually, it will show in their life. And that's not what we want. We should put God in their ear all the time. But that was a, a side note, but very important detail that we should understand. Back to what I was saying. I knew the lyrics to the song, but I didn't know the lyrics until this week. When I sung them and realized the meaning says, I was made to love you, I was made to find you, I was made just for you, made to adore you, I was made to love and be loved by you. What beautiful words right there. And what a humble statement, honestly. The only reason I'm here is because of you, God. And that's it. I was made to love you, God. I was made to find you, God. I was made just for you, God. I was made just to adore you. Nothing about me. Amen? Amen. So I want to make these four points that we're going to talk about today. The first and foremost is I was made to love you. We were made to love God. The first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And that's love. What does this truly mean? We are supposed to love God with all our heart, our physical being, all our body. The heart is a representation of our physical self. With everything that we do in our life, we are supposed to show the love that we have to God before anything else. For it says, You shall have no other gods before me. God is jealous. And that is not a bad thing. God wants all of you. Because he made all of you for himself. Amen. I mean, let me give you an example. So I, I make a batch of cookies for myself. But these cookies end up in Michaela's mouth. I'm upset. Because I made those cookies for me. Right? That's simplified, but that's kind of similar to God. Whenever we end up turning to someone else or something else, God is upset with us because He wants us. He wants our devotion. So what does it mean to love God with all your soul? Our soul is our spiritual being. And it means that our spiritual being should be on fire and full of zeal for Christ. We should want to long for times of prayer. We should be excited and happy. 
when we have a chance to read the Bible. We should long for anything that's about Christ. Our spiritual life should be strong. Because now that we are in Christ Jesus, since we have Him, we should be like a tree planted by the river, tall and strong, where the winds may blow against it. It will not fall. This is a place where most Christians fall at. They have more zeal for other things than they do for the greatest thing. And I heard a pastor say once that sometimes good things can become bad things when they take the place of the greatest thing. Amen. Amen. I, I find that a lot sometimes in my phone. Hmm. I'm like, man, I have more zeal for my phone than I have for God. For my work, I have more zeal for my work than God. And I have to call myself out. And that's something that we all struggle with. So let your spiritual life reignite with vigor and devotion. Retrain your soul to love God. Follow the commandment. The last thing of the scripture is that we should love God with all our mind. This is summed up in Philippians Four, chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Think about such things. When we love God with all our mind, mind we think about Him always. All the time. He is our main focus at all the time. Our mind represents our intellectual life or anything that goes on in our mind. There's plenty of times where I'll be sitting there thinking about hot sauce for some reason. <laughs> they will be saying, What are you thinking about? Hot sauce. I just want some hot sauce on like a chicken nugget or something like that. I don't know. I'm hungry. Okay. And we move on, right? But this is what it means that we are made to love God. The second thing is that we are made to find God. What does this mean? Our whole purpose in life is to find Jesus. That's it. That is our goal, is to find Jesus. Whenever you don't know Christ, your goal in life is to find Christ. Because it's eternal life. It's literally just life. So you find it. And you cherish it. And in Proverbs it says, um, get wisdom. Get understanding. No, no, no matter if it costs you everything you have, get wisdom. Wisdom is Christ. Spend everything you have to gain Christ. Chase after Him with your life. Christ is the pinnacle of our life and the great crescendo of our symphony. So why do we think, why do we think when we look at the world and anyone who lives in the world that they all look exactly the same? They all seem exactly the same. They, they're, they're dull. They have no vigor of life. They're just floating through the ocean. <laughs> Their lives are so dull because they have nothing that they are striving for besides themselves. We follow Christ while they chase self-ambition. And when you go to a Christian and ask them what the best thing that has ever happened to them in their life, they will always tell you, the day I get baptized, the day I was saved. And they'll tell you all about how it led up to that and how it's going away with that, how life's going on. But it's always about that one point. I found Christ this day. I remember way back when, whenever Jesus came into my life. And though you might think that they are all the same, because they all involve finding Christ. Everyone's story about finding Christ is unique. 
There's some people who have a 180 conversion, a solid Paul moment, and there's some who grew up, like me, grew up in the church and was raised that way, and you just slowly accept it until you start understanding. Like the kids that are up here, they don't have the 180 experience, hopefully. And I thank God for that. Mm -hmm. I thank God for that. And that's, it's amazing just to see them just all excited whenever I ask, what's Christmas all about? And they go, Jesus! God! It's, it's, it's nice. It's really nice. So the third point is, we were made just for God. Now this point is the most humbling statement of it all. Our one and only purpose in this life is for God. He made us for Him, not for anyone else but Himself. That is why He gets so angry when we turn away from Him. We are His, not anyone else else's. We are to give ourselves to God and God only. For we are to give unto Caesar what is Caesar's, and give unto God what is God's Scripture. And God made us, so we give ourselves to God. We are God's. That's it. It's fine. See, instead of having from the Toy Story Andy on our foot, it's God. We have God on our foot because He has possession over us. But it's not the Word we are made in His image. That's the difference. We are made for God. The fourth thing is that we are made to adore God. Another sole purpose is we are made to sing God's praises. Amen? We are made to be in adoration every day, all day, for God. The scripture says, if we don't cry out God's praises, surely the rocks will cry out God's mm. praises. And I had, a, I had an Amazon delivery the other day, and I got it to the house, and they had this rock. And they wrote on it, said, I'm not going to let me, or... Don't let me do your job. Hmm. I thought it was funny. I was like, I hmm. like that. I want to take the rock, but then I'd be stealing. I can't do that. <laughs> no. But I liked it. I really liked it. I was like, I like that. Don't let me do your, do your job. Because you. our job is to adore God and to praise God. Sing of His praises. I'll give credit to Michaela because she does this well. See, I'll be driving and thinking about how much I love hot sauce and she will say, I don't understand. Of course, I'll be thinking. She read my mind. She knows I'm talking about hot sauce in my head. And she's thinking, why, why are you talking? I don't understand why you're talking about hot sauce. That's why I think that she's saying that. And then she continues and says, I don't understand how people can see nature and just be happy and calling it an accident. Mm. And I'll be like, I don't understand either. Because she is in adoration. She's adoring God's creation. She sees a tree and she says, God made that. Mm. Wow. And so many times we pass so many trees. Because I don't know how many trees y'all have seen. I've seen a lot of trees. And we don't think about it. God made that one tree mm. with a certain knot in one spot and a broken branch in another spot and a full strong branch that kind of makes it lean to the side in one spot. It, just think about how detailed it is. And why God made that one tree sitting in that one spot. And you're just going to adore God. And that's what David does. David thinks about the laws that God gave them. And all he does is think about it. Think, you gave these to me to follow. How kind is it that you think I can actually uphold these? How kind is it that you brought them to me because you expect more from me than anyone else? And he praised God through that. Amen. Amen. So let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you adored Christ? That you actually just saw, sat in, and sought after Him? Because when I see Michaela do that to me in the car, I just see her at Jesus' feet. And I'm Martha, she's Mary. Jesus looks at me and says, Martha, 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 sit down. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, God. I'm so busy with life. We get so caught up. Life's just a river and it's flowing. 
you know, it carries us on. We grow and we keep on aging and, and stress gets piled on over and over and we wish that it just disappear eventually. And no, it doesn't work like that. Something else, you, you eventually get used to handling it, but then more comes on you and now you're, it's, it's just, you don't know how to handle it. So when was the last time that you adored Christ? If it's been a while, I'm giving you homework today. <clears throat> now don't get upset. It's not to do next Sunday. You don't have to write a paper or anything like that. But this week, every day, spend at least at least ten minutes adoring Christ. Don't say a word. Don't go to Him asking for anything. Just sit there and think about things that are around you. Think about Him and the work that He's done in you. And just sit in awe. Let me know how that changes your life and how that makes you happy or how that makes you more thankful and more gratitude. So we have those four statements, but the greatest thing that we need to understand is though we are made to love God, God loves us dearly. And in the end it says, um, I was made to love you and be loved by you. See, it's not that we were made just to be loved by Him, but we were made to accept His love and to let Him love us. So many times we just look at ourselves and say, I don't deserve God. Don't love me. Don't love me. I deserve the death that you gave. So keep your love to yourself. I don't want it. And God's like, come here. Come here. You know. God loves us dearly. God loves us so much that He sent His Son over 2,000 years ago to be born just to die 30 years later. Mm -hmm. To die a death that He didn't deserve. He walked a blameless life. Knew no sin, but took on all sin. Mm. Just to say, a stiff neck and rebellious people who aren't worth anything. We are stuck up. We are rebellious. But God thinks you're worth it all. So you're made to love God, to love God. You're made to find God, so if you haven't found God, the altar's open. You can stay in your seat. Find Him today, I beg you. He's waiting. Father waits with his arms open wide to put a robe around you, a ring on your finger, and to celebrate with fat and calf. Find God. Find him and you will realize that he was never lost. You were made just for God, so be God's. And lastly, you were made to adore God. So praise His name. Amen. Amen. For God loves you. Dear Heavenly Father God, thank you for speaking to me to share this message with God. I ask that you take these four points and that you move within this congregation. That you let them take these four points into this world and let it change their lives and the peoples around them. God, we adore you. We praise you, God. We're so thankful that you made us just for you. You made us to love you, and you made us to find you, God. And we're so grateful that you love us so much to send your son to be born and to die for us. We praise your holy and precious name. Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. 280 grown.